This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 2.04 the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Your voice, well, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. And um, I don't know if you were listening to Rush or not, but Hillary Clinton giving, uh, giving, uh, taking to folks, uh, men, you're just not needed. Did you know that? You're not needed in any way, shape, or form. Um, feminism, I don't know. I think it transcends feminism. Uh, I, I, I truly do. I mean, there are a certain faction of females that are always going to feel like the feminists want them to feel. You know, men are common oafs hanging from tree limbs with their giant sloth-like hands um, and pretty much not useful for much of anything. Um, I... Um, uh, I don't know what to say other than this must be a last-ditch effort by Hillary uh, to to find another base, to find something else <laughs> to glob onto. It uh, it just makes no makes no sense. Um, women, you're going to find the food. Women, you're going to. You know, be uh, uh, driving the herds of whatever, uh, you know, livestock you've got left because climate change is coming and it's going to wipe out everything. And men, I don't know where men are. I'm not exactly sure. Fishing, well, no, there won't be any fish because it'll be so hot, all the lakes and streams will dry up. Uh, so that's, that's not an issue. What is this? You know, I, I can't even get a handle on what the Democrat Party is all about anymore. You know, I thought about this before I came in the studio, and I thought, okay, with Memo Gate uh, continuing, the Democrats shutting down the country, shutting down the government uh, over illegal aliens, not even a budget crisis or a difference of opinion in some type of legislation, but over illegals. They shut the government down for that. You've got Hillary out uh, preaching to university females uh, that you don't need men. Uh, Climate change is going to, I guess, ruin life on the planet as we know now. I don't even understand what Democrats are all about anymore. Now, if you're a Democrat, um, you can't feel this way. You can't be laboring under... That misconception, I don't think. So why are the people representing you doing that? I mean, it's like Hillary Clinton had Nancy Pelosi disease. You know, trying to string a few words together to make a sentence was something out of her wheelhouse, evidently. Um, number one, I think climate change pretty much is a, a new profit line. I think it's uh, the biggest hoax that's been perpetrated on the American people. Um, it's making tons of money for people like Al Gore and others. Um, no, I, I don't think, I don't think uh, Montana is going to turn into a desert and life as we know it. What was it? Uh, Hawking said, you know, Hawking, you know, the super duper smart guy. Stephen uh, Hawking. Stephen Hawking. If we don't colonize Mars in the next 30 years, life as a human being is doomed. Well, what? What kind of movies has this guy been watching? I mean, I realize he's a very, very intelligent man. But I, I do not understand anything about the Democrats any longer other than they're willing to destroy the country rather than let Republicans succeed in government. I, that's obvious. I mean, that's obvious. But you listen to Chuck Schumer, you listen to Nancy Pelosi, you listen to a few others, and it's like, man, where are they going with this stuff? You know, at this point, uh, you know, I, I'm for the Republicans throwing them a bone and saying, hey, let's, you know, try to work on behalf of the American people. 
Uh, I This thing with Hillary, it just made no sense whatsoever. None. Um, I guess if, uh, you know, you are to embrace the feminist movement, as it was, uh, I'm told, uh, back in the 60s and 70s, I was way too young in the first part of the 60s, but uh, you don't need men. Um, they, uh, forgive me, but sex of any kind, even among married couples, is really rape, no matter the situation. Actually, they wrote a book on it. Um, my question, before I get into the show today, um, you know, if I were to run into you on the street, or maybe getting coffee, what have you, uh, and I were to say to you, um, which I don't, I don't do this, but uh, are you Republican or Democrat? Well, Rick, I'm a Democrat and proud of it. Okay, cool. Uh, as long as you're involved in the process. Let me ask you something. What in the world is the Democratic representation in the nation's capital? What is their agenda? Uh, I know what their narrative is. It's all across the board. What is their agenda? What did t- Democrats stand for? Where do they want to go? What is their ultimate goal, politically and socially, I suppose? I mean, we've already taken God out of, uh, you know, every facet of government. Um, we The Constitution has become, oh, yeah, that thing, it's old. Uh, the paper is really yellow, too. Um, it's like the Constitution is an afterthought. You know, I, I, I don't want to be that, that hard on the situation, but tell me, please, as a Democrat, Voting for Democratic representation, what do Democrats stand for now? Because I have no clue. You know, the memo gate it makes Watergate look like a, a kid's tea party. I mean, people are going to go to jail over this. They will. If there's any justice left in this country, people are going to go to jail over this. I mean, you're getting FISA warrants based on Yahoo News articles. It's just nuts. The Constitution means absolutely nothing anymore to some. All right, there you go. That's the question, Uh, and I'm serious. I am serious. Uh, What does the Democratic Party, what do the Democrats in Washington, not talking about your next-door neighbor or the guy that you work in the next cubicle with or, you know, the guy out on the job site that's a Democrat. I'm talking about your representation in D.C. What do they stand for? What is their ultimate? Uh, I'm proud to be a Democrat, Rick. Okay, tell me why. Why are you proud to be a Democrat? What are your representatives in the nation's capital doing that makes you so proud? And I'm not badgering. I'm not ambushing. I'm seriously. I've been I've been doing this a long time, and I don't know that I've ever been as confused politically as I am now. It's like the Constitution doesn't matter. Um, you know the uh, the basis for government, the rule of law, none of that matters anymore. And I, number one, I'm wondering when, when that happened. I guess I was taking a nap. But number two, what do the Democrats stand for in Washington? What is their agenda? What is their goal? Someone please tell me. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Your call straight ahead. Alexa. Right, 17 minutes, 17 minutes after the hour. No, I'm, I'm quite serious. Somebody came in the studio and said, are you serious? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. I mean, did you hear Did you hear Hillary Clinton talking? I, I truly believe she's got Nancy Pelosi disease. Women, you're absolutely right. They will bear the brunt of looking for all the food, looking for firewood, looking for a place to migrate when all of the grass is finally gone. What? Not only is the American voting public sexist, um, Hillary Clinton now says global climate change will also have an impact on women because global warming trends are themselves sexist. Speaking to a group of college students at, uh, I think she was at Georgetown, as part of a panel on women and human rights, 
she addressed a, a woman in the audience who suggested that weather, typically an objective force that impacts populations equally regardless of their innate character, characteristics, was in fact sexist. The weather is sexist now. Clinton could have said, um, sit down, you moron wrapped in an idiot. Um, you know, you, you, you'll feel differently next year. Of course, she immediately agreed. Oh, yeah. I would say that particularly for women, you're absolutely right. Women will bear the brunt of looking for the food, looking for the firewood, looking for the place to migrate to when all of the grass is finally, because I guess it's going to get so hot, the grass is going to die. Um, and uh, all of these areas will become deserts, will move south, and you have to keep uh, keep moving your livestock because your crops are no longer growing. They're burning up in the intense heat that we're now seeing reported across North Africa and the Middle East into India. It snowed in the Sahara last year. What is she talking about? Yes, Clinton went on. Women, once again, will be the primary, primarily burdened with the problems of climate change. Humanity is, of course, capable of a doubt. I'm sorry. I lost my mind. I, I did. I, it's, how's the weather sexist? Uh, I'm well, uh, Truly, I think if we're to be fair to one another, Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, and there's about five or six others, should submit to a psychological exam so that if they need medication, if they need therapy, counseling of some sort, we can help them out. Uh, Clinton's theories on gender discrimination have never been on the mark, though. To close out her speech, he returned to a more familiar, you may remember this, the Americans voted for Donald Trump in the last, what happened? Here you go. Americans voted for Donald Trump in the last presidential election because they're sexist. They're jerks who couldn't handle the thought of a female president. No, we just couldn't handle the thought of you, a female president. I can think of a lot of women that do a good job. But yeah, she somehow spun the grass dying, crops dying, human beings migrating to the south to escape the intense heat. She somehow turned that into why I lost the election. Some of it was old-fashioned uh, sexism and a refusal, a refusal to accept the equality of women and certainly the equality of women's leadership. And some of it is an outgrowth, this is her speaking, of all this anxiety and insecurity that is playing on the people and leading them in a hunt for scapegoats. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry, unless the entire state of Wisconsin um, was hidden by a giant wall of sexism, the theory doesn't work. I, I mean, I'm worried about the woman. I truly am. Uh, let's go to Jason in Flower Mound. Jason, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Hey, Rick, I just heard that, and it sure sounds like that hunter-gatherer thing is sexist. You know, yeah, it does. Back. Yeah, well, how is the weather sexist? Forgive me. Oh, well, we got rid of the stereotypes with the hurricane, so it's gone now, you know. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just trying to help you. Uh, no, I'm 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 struggling today trying between Hillary off the wall. I mean, she sounds like Nancy Pelosi. Uh what where have I gone? What are the Democrats after? That's what I want to know. Well, to answer your question, I think they've become a Frankensteinian monster with three brains, two left thumbs, gender parts from all over, and all sorts of body parts from things that don't belong. It doesn't make any sense. Where? Okay, let me ask you something, and I mean this quite sincerely. If I were to meet you at the coffee place and eh, sit down for a second, we sit down for a minute, and I were to ask you, where do you believe the Democrats want to take this country? What is their ultimate goal? What is, you know, their narrative, I get. It's like, you know, whatever the Republicans say, they say the opposite. You know, that's a five-year-old mentality. But seriously, I mean, based on shutting the government down for what? Dispute on legislation or budgets? No. Over illegal aliens. And and the memo gate, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give a FISA warrant based on a Yahoo News article. I mean, based on all this garbage, where, where do they want to go? What's their ultimate goal? 
Well, to me, it sounds like they are a flea market in the Nobel Peace Prize. You know, I, I mean, they've got such small ideas, and it's like they want to fundamentally change America. Okay, fine. Uh, what are you replacing it with? Well, we already had a president that wanted to fundamentally change America, not for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but eight years. I don't know where that got us. I, I mean, well, they tore institutions down, but they haven't replaced them. Can we not? come together as Republicans and Democrats and while we may disagree on some things, uh, ultimately work for the benefit of the country and the people that live within our borders. Is that too much to ask of our politicians in, in D.C.? Well, I think they focus on the people and not the country. There are individual people that count or individual ideas that count, but they don't put it in the big package of the country. I, I don't I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Hillary Clinton speaking to, where was it, Georgetown, I think. Uh, the weather is sexist. I lost because of misogyny and uh, sexism. Um, and the people that voted for Trump were all jerks. Well, that's not probably a way to endear yourself to millions of people, is it? Oh, well, you've just already got X'd out half the, the voters and probably another third. It, it's it's crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Today was sort of the day that uh, it was one of those things where I thought to myself, okay, I can I can think through this. I'll be able to think through this somehow. What is she saying? And I couldn't figure it out. So. Uh, I lost, and you don't like me for pick one, two, three, four, five, or six. You know any any part of her that you don't like instead of just saying i don't like you <laughs> maybe maybe that's it maybe maybe it's as simple as that i i it's it's crazy i appreciate the call 225 the time i'm serious i i don't know that it can be answered to be honest with you what do the Democrats want? What's their ultimate goal? Uh, I know what their narrative is. If Republicans say up, they say down, they say black, you say white. I get all that. Uh, well, uh-huh. Did you do that? Uh, well, he did it first. I mean, I understand the narrative. You know, it's, it's childish. It makes no sense. What I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is what is the ultimate goal? I mean, you've got Hillary Clinton with Nancy Pelosi disease talking about, well, you know that weather. Psh, I'll tell you why I lost. That weather is sexist. I lost because of old-fashioned sexism, misogyny, and, uh, you know, the people voting for Trump were just jerks. They don't want a female in office. No, that's not it. We just didn't want that female in office. <laughs> All right, two thirty-four the time. I'm I'm as confused now as I was when I walked in the studio. You know, I'm used to hearing Hillary Clinton say ridiculous things. I mean, but she's always seemed somewhat intelligent to me. I may disagree with her. I have a visceral reaction to her commentary, but she, up to this point hasn't sounded like Nancy Pelosi, which is just a blubbering idiot. Uh, I don't, well, let, here, let me, you be the judge. A girl stands up at Georgetown in the audience. Don't you think the weather is sexist? What, what will women do? Uh, it'll impact us more than men. I don't get that, but here's Hillary's answer. National commitment. With respect to the rest of the world, I would say that particularly uh, for women, you're absolutely right. They will bear the brunt of looking for the food, looking for the firewood, uh, looking for uh, the place to migrate to when all of the grass is finally gone as the uh, desertification moves south and you have to keep moving your livestock or your crops are no longer uh, growing, they're burning up in uh, the intense heat that we're now seeing reported yeah. uh, across uh, North Africa into the Middle East and into India. Where it snowed so in the So yes, Sahara women once year. again will be the primary 
um, primarily burdened with the uh, problems of climate change. So look for international organizations to support. Uh, there are some groups that are planting trees, and people say... Yeah, and then it goes on. You know, plant a tree... Um, go ahead and get your uh, get your your homestead started as far south as you can get because the North America is going to burn up. But what is wrong with her? I mean, I look. I've seen a lot of congressmen at three martini lunches with Reuben sandwich all over their face, but that's just nuts. Yes, so uh, you see, women are going to be especially burdened. Uh, they will be the uh, hunter-gatherers. Uh, what? W- where are the guys in this scenario? In the scenario that uh, she just painted, where are we? Well, women will be hunting for food. They'll be gathering firewood. They'll be driving the herds. That's what's going to happen. Really? Uh, she has lost her ever-loving mind. What, what do Democrats want? What, what is your ultimate goal if you're coming out with something like that? Uh, let's go to uh, Phil. Phil, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Phil? Uh, well, I'm, I'm fine. Um, but this isn't Phil. This is Nancy, Rick. Oh. And you oh. have to understand. See, we can't tell you what we're going to do until we do it. Oh, I see. Okay. That, that's, that's, that, don't you understand? Well, that's now I do, we Nancy. Free yeah. Healthcare. Yeah. We gave you free health care because we had to pass it first so you could see what was in it. I and gotcha. so now we have to do what we have to do so you can understand what we're doing, Rick. Precisely. I got you. Doesn't that make yeah. sense? Now, listen, I'm going to explain the weather to you. Okay, okay uh, now hold, you're, hold on, you're, you're telling... hold on, Ms. Pelosi. I want to take copious notes here. All right, go ahead. Oh, okay. Are, are you ready? I am indeed, yes. Okay. okay, now here's the thing. Now, Mrs. Clinton, you should not talk bad about her because she is telling you the truth, Rick. Now, here's the thing. The sun is the male. Do you understand? The sun is the male. The and, sun is the, the earth. Okay. The earth is the woman. Okay, ah. and the sun is trying to be nice to the earth and make her happy. Right. And he's doing a bad job of it. And that's what men are doing. I They're see. doing a I... bad job of things. Hmm. And and they are going to ruin things. So that's why Mrs. Clinton was telling you the truth, Rick. The men are going to ruin things, so the women are going to have to pick everything up and do it all. Don't you understand that? Well, We've I've... been trying to tell you all this for so. a long time. Yeah. Well, um what what happens, Miss Pelosi, if uh, if in fact uh, N- Montana doesn't turn into a desert? And uh, Montana is a desert, Rick. Don't you understand? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's it just, is a desert. It's just covered up by all that Haven't snow. You've been up yeah. there. I just was up there. Yeah, and it's it's terrible. You can't find anything up there. Yeah, no water. No, and, yeah, and. <sighs> We tried to give you free health care, Rick. We tried. I, I know. I know. And you know what? Then, I appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I, I do appreciate it. There's Nancy Pelosi in uh, one of her more uh, <clears throat> stoic moments. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. It, it's like the loony bin. The, in, the entire Democratic Party in D.C. is like an, a throwback to a 1950s insane asylum. One flew over the Hillary nest. Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy. It makes no sense. Let's go to Fred in Frisco. Fred, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Fred? Oh, I'm doing fine, Rick. Uh, I uh, was listening to your program, uh, and uh, I, I, you have a good program. You're very informative. Uh, you're uh, obviously a well-educated man. But your question about the Democrats and who are they, uh, Democrats come from – the moral high ground, uh, they always pick and choose the moral high ground, whether it be with uh, the blacks or with gays or with women or with the disabled. And it's hard to overcome that if you're on the other side. Uh, it makes uh, the other party, the Republicans in this case, appear as if they uh, are not doing as well morally as the Democrats are. Now, it's true that 
uh, the Democrats have been taken over, hijacked by uh, some uh, uh, irresponsible people, uh, enablers like Hillary Clinton, yes. But uh, generally speaking, and I come, I'm an old Democrat. I come from, uh, the, I'm a Depression baby. And I remember when Roosevelt died, how my mother cried because she thought Roosevelt did such a good job in taking care of poor people during the Depression. And then Harry Truman comes along, and he was decisive, and he uh, dropped the atomic bomb on uh, Japan. And he uh, later on uh, in Korea, he uh, had to stand up to the North Koreans coming across the uh, 38th parallel into South Korea. And uh, but that party over time has changed. But um, uh, and I and I allow for that, and it kind of turned me into an independent because I couldn't always vote for Democrats um, it, because they were um, obviously getting away from who they originally were. So I, I hope this gives you a better idea, moral high ground, think about it. I hope this gives you a better idea of why an old Democrat still hangs on to the hope that the Democrat, Democratic Party will uh, change and become a better party and stop hiding behind um, this uh, moral high ground business. Uh, 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 yeah, okay, I, you know, I understand all of that, the moral high ground, the, you know, catering to minorities as if, you know, they can't compete on a level playing field. You know, that's what they did with the blacks for 50 years. Yeah, well, we've got to do that because the blacks can't make it on their own. Well, they, they sure can. Of course they can. You just got to provide a, a equal footing, a level playing field. No, 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 no. Without the Democrats, the blacks can't make it. Uh, that was just a con. That was a con. Uh, they went from um, covert racism to over or overt racism to covert racism. I mean, I just don't know where they're going. I don't know what they want. If you're a Democrat, what do you want? All right, uh, 2.47 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion, your voice, your opinion, your attitude uh, on the issues of the day. My issue is trying to figure out, and I'm not being flippant at all. Um, I understand the narrative coming out of uh, Democrats in D.C. I don't understand the ultimate goal. Hillary speaking at uh, Georgetown one of the students uh, gets up and says, well, aren't women going to bear the brunt of climate change? This is what, uh, what Hillary said. With respect to the rest of the world, I would say that particularly uh, for women, you're absolutely right. They will bear the brunt of looking for the food, looking for the firewood, uh, looking for uh, the place to migrate to when all of the grass is finally gone as the uh, desertification moves south and you right. have to keep moving your livestock or your crops are no longer there you go it's uh we're just gonna call her rawhide clinton from now on ladies get them doggies rolling yeah women once again will be the primary uh, primarily burdened with the all right uh, i'm sorry I, I i think she's drunk i do i i think she's um, <laughs> something's wrong. It, it doesn't make any sense. All right. Now let's get to your calls. Let's go to, uh, Darren in Farmer's Branch. Darren, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Darren? Hey, doing pretty good, Rick. And before I launch into my, uh, questions, I, I would like to note that Nancy's sounding a lot like a man nowadays. I don't know. Yeah, that was a little strange, was I was. She, yeah, you know, yeah. she had a must have something in her throat. Yeah, and, she uh, called in here on the newsmaker line and was, "Hey, Rick, how's it going? Everything all right?" Yeah, was, yeah, I'm a little yeah. concerned. I always had a, a hunch, but uh, well. but anyway, uh, I have two questions and then a comment based on your answers, and these questions tap into your knowledge as an attorney or okay. former attorney, but uh, if they were to arrest people for this FISA or any of the other Democratic uh, malfeasance that has occurred, would the, uh, would the cases be tried in D.C. alone or would they be in various courts throughout the nation depending on the I mean, what, what, what would the venue be 
And I'll tell you why. I, I, would, I would assume D.C. Okay. Second is, would they uh, be tried just before a judge, or would they also have jury, like, of the people that live in that area? No, I, like- I, don't, I don't think you, this would be a jury case. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm the last guy that knows much about the FISA court other than, you know, if uh, you can go th- to three judges or you go to the single judge, which they did in this case. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, what about the non FISA stuff? You know, we, well, we've that's, been. That depends on the charge. Be- okay. My my thing is, and I've been thinking about this, it's like, you know, we've been wanting the rest for so long, and, you know, why don't they do something? If they did, would I don't think that they would get a conviction just based on the fact that if it goes in front of a jury and this, you know, this nation is so split right now trying to, get a jury that has any Democrats on it to vote against the Democrat. I think the prosecutor could put his best case he's ever had in his life, make his best argument, and the defense attorney could come up and say, it's a vast right-wing conspiracy and sit down, and that would be enough to hang the jury. Right, right. I, well, I, I'm, you I'm know- almost wondering if, if we're at a point now where Democrats can literally get away with anything no matter what. I See, that's, you know, that's another reason uh, for, for me asking what I ask at the top of the hour. Uh, I mean, this court, I mean, what is the FISA court? And what role did it play in the release of this now declassified memo? Well, the court referred to a 2014 CNN article as possibly the most powerful court you've never heard of. It was established uh, in the late 70s, I think. Uh, According to the U.S. Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court website, and they do have a website, uh, it it will look at applications made by the United States government for approval of surveillance, physical search, uh, certain other forms of investigation. Um, You know, the operations of the court are incredibly secret, and most of the documents that come in and out of the hands of the judges are classified which would make sense. Um, It's made up of 11 judges, the court itself, who set, I think they're, it's a seven-year term, if I'm not mistaken. All members are also federal district judges and are appointed by the chief of the Supreme Court. Um, And, of course, you know, uh, John Roberts would uh, would hold that. In In general terms, what it does is grant approval to requests regarding wiretaps, uh, other electronic monitoring for uh, foreign intelligence purposes, spying. Sometimes the mm-hmm. approvals lead to surveillance of Americans, and we now know that, and we've known yeah. that for some time. Um, the proposals have to be signed by a number of high-ranking officials like FBI, Department of Justice, Attorney General's Office, before they present them to one of the, one of the judges who rules on whether it's legitimate enough um, to grant uh, a warrant for, you know, some kind of uh, surveillance activity. You know, one of the criticisms right. is the small amount of proposals that are denied. It's almost like the, it rubber stamps everything that comes through. Um, you know, I yeah. I, I look at this. Well, in, in 2014 or 15, don't recall which, doesn't matter, Congress passed a law that required uh, the FIFC to publish activities of the court, including statistics. Now, you know, that, uh, I don't know whether I'd be for that or not, on the number of applications or certificates submitted and then how many were approved, that kind of thing. Obviously, we're not going to tell you what's in it. Uh, But it just, uh, the memo that was released Friday raises a lot of concerns about the legitimacy and the legality of certain DOJ and FBI interactions, how they're working together with a FISA court as, uh, you know, a breakdown of the legal process established to protect you and me from uh, from abuses related to the FISA process. And I, I got to tell you, um, I, I truly think somebody's going to jail over this. Well, they should. I just, I, I, I've, I've lost so much confidence i mean i have no confidence at all left really in the in the process just because it seems like 
any any liberal Democrat, if you have, uh, you know, uh, the FBI won't prosecute them, or then they get prosecuted. Okay, well, you got the jury. You might be able to to uh, be on your side. I mean, they got so many things in their deck. Republicans, we we tend to take out our dirty laundry a little bit better than Democrats, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's just my, my observation. But lately, because of all the news and all the um, – just the psychology behind it, I can't imagine a citizen being on one of these trials and, you know, and, and saying, oh, yeah, guilty. I mean, <laughs> a, a, a Democratic voter – on that and what 40 percent of the nation at least is falls into that so i just can't see them getting a a conviction unless it goes before just a judge to get tried you know to get a conviction and i always thought that whenever it if it included jail time that it usually can request a jury I think if I was a Democrat on on trial, a sleeve bag like that, I would just go ahead and say, "Hey, yeah. give me a jury trial." Yeah, you know? I'll roll the dice. Uh, what difference does <laughs> yeah. it make? Uh, yeah. No, you're 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 right, Darren. Um, and I don't think anybody, I don't think Democrats or Republicans at this point have a lot of confidence in the FISA warrant process. Um, you know, this whole thing, the FISA court. Um, in the, uh, getting the FISA warrants for espionage and terrorism and all that, that was started by Ted Kennedy. I think it was 77 or 78. I can't recall, but, uh, yeah, you're right. There's a lot to be, um, <laughs> to be checked out and it doesn't look like uh, a lot of people have been doing any checking, uh, two fifty six the time. What do Democrats really want? What's their ultimate goal? According to Hillary, they want to collect firewood and drive the cows and plant trees or something. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, welcome 306 the time. <laughs> Why did I lose the election? Misogyny, sexism, and just old-fashioned jerks. They they were too uh, Here's the problem. Hillary Clinton's not in the White House because all you men out there are so insecure you could you couldn't stand the thought of a female in power. At least that's what she told Georgetown University. Um, you know, I can think of lots of Condoleezza Rice. I mean, that woman is incredibly educated, incredibly intelligent. Um, it wasn't that we didn't want a female. We just didn't want you, Hillary. And we wanted a female that you could trust, you could rely on, that shows some leadership ability, that isn't embroiled in a scandal every 15 minutes. And that's just not you. Uh, let's go to Jesse in Dallas. Jesse, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jesse? Oh, I'm doing real well. I, and I tell you, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to talk on your show. I listen to you as often as I possibly can. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, I was telling your screener when I came on that I was raised, I'm 68 years old, but when I was raised, I raised in South Oak Cliff, my whole family was Democrats. And I would, as I was growing up and getting education and everything, I'd ask my dad why he voted. And he'd say, because they're Democrats. And I would, I couldn't figure that out. And it just uh, kind of confused me that it didn't make any difference what the, what they stood for, you know. And, uh, and as I got older, uh, me and my dad, we, we clashed a lot because I'm a born-again Christian. I believe in the Constitution. And I don't care if they're Democrat or Republican. They've got to have the views that I have, you know. And uh, my dad would tell me, no, you got to vote because they're Democrat. And uh, one time, one of his friends, my dad lived in Louisville at that point, and one of his friends ran for sheriff in Denton County, and he was a Republican. Right. And he told me, he said, he said, I know my dad's going to come back and just kick my butt, but he said, I'm going to vote for him. I said, but, Dad, he stands for what's right. He goes, yeah, but he's a Republican. 
<laughs> and so, you know, the idiocy of what, and I see this day in and day out with people around me, that they do it because they need somebody to think for them, I guess, you know, because I, as a born-again Christian, you know, I would tell my dad, I said, Dad, those people that you're voting for are for abortion. Well, but they're Democrats. I said, why don't you vote for the guy that's not for abortion? You know, I right. don't care about whether he's right. a Democrat or what he is, you know. So I don't know that there's an answer, you know, when you say what's their agenda, other than they're looking for people that will follow them without asking the question. I, if that makes sense, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but what yeah. is it? I guess what I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, looking for is what the what's the ultimate goal? I, I mean, I realize they want people to, you know, shut their eyes and hold their nose and vote for every Democrat that comes down the line. But, but, mm -hmm. but, what's the ultimate goal? Well, you know, I'm thinking that that if the Democrats' goal is to, just from my experience with my dad and my family and stuff, is it is it they can convince people. Uh, like them to follow them, and then they're going to make the agenda, whatever it is that suits them financially or however they want to deal with it, because everything I've ever seen shows a, a wall built there, and, and, this, and a wall on one side of it is nothing but poverty. On the other side of it is, is everything that's plush, and there's a sign out there that says Demo uh, Democrat politicians. Right. And I've always kind of I, I believed that, that, you know, it's Hillary Clinton – and and the others, you know, they're worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. They're surrounded in homes by a wall around them and everything, but yet they say they're for the little folks and everything. And the only way they can do that is uneducated. So I think the agenda is going to be uneducated people is what they've got to get or people that are too lazy to stand up and think for themselves. Uh, and it, it's just – it amazes me. And I'm <laughs> – and I think if you could come back from heaven, my dad would probably come back and whoop me right now, but I, I can't help it. <laughs> you know? No, I, and, uh, I, I get it. You know, it's, you know, you get so involved and in, in mired in political issues of the day, and it's always Republican against Democrat, Democrat against Republican. It's always camp building. Very seldom do either one of the parties actually end up working for us, which is what they're supposed to be doing. Um, mm -hmm. But as, I, as I've watched this from the inauguration forward, and then this thing with Hillary was just sort of the last straw. It was like, what is she mm -hmm. talking about? Um, right. It, right. It, and for what purpose? Usually there's a reason for saying something. Um, yes. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't get it. And I should. After 20 years in this business, I should understand. Right. I should be able to connect the dots. It's just like with Nancy Pelosi. It's like throwing confetti on the floor and trying to connect that. It doesn't make any oh. sense. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, you know, I know you're really busy, but I want to ask a question. Uh, don't you think that some of this is the main reason that Donald Trump actually got elected because yes. us, the yes. conservatives and everything, we're just tired of it. We're just tired of it. No, I, I think you're uh, right. I think people were sick and tired of being at least perceived lied to. They were tired mm -hmm. of politicians telling them whatever they wanted to hear. Then when they got to D.C. doing whatever they wanted, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was it's sort of like the, you know, the black community is a good example. They've been told for the last half century, vote for mm -hmm. Democrats. We'll take care of you. Don't vote for Republicans. Mm -hmm. They'll cut off your your benefits. Yeah. Um, right. And nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, it's yeah. uh, and, and so this last election, blacks didn't turn out for Hillary. They didn't run to Trump either, but they just didn't vote. Mm -hmm. You know, they're sick of right. getting turkeys at Thanksgiving and toys at Christmas and watching uh, their representatives drive off in new escalades to the suburbs. I mean, oh, I, uh, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely understand. I, I grew up um, in my childhood and all my school and I was in South Oak Cliff. So it was, it was a poor neighborhood, but we was we loved each other and we stuck together. And I never knew that there was color until I got old enough for somebody to tell me that. I just thought the difference was rich and poor. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, so it's a. I I think you're absolutely right, but I think that Donald Trump represents the one thing that all of us, and I say that as us, us conservatives, is to get the stinking politicians out and get somebody in there that just loves America. And I think that's what Donald Trump is with all his flaws and his billionaire playboy reputation and all that. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that's 100%. I don't think that exists. 
Um, but you've certainly got a non-politician politician in the White House. Uh, I just, I mean, I can't, I've never seen Democrats lose it the way they've lost it in the last year. 313, the time will do a little business. Back with your calls. What's the true agenda? What's the ultimate goal of Democrats? Well, I don't know. According to Hillary Clinton, she wants you to plant some trees um, and she wants you to drive the herd south. I'm not exactly sure how far south. Um, and uh, women are going to bear the brunt of climate change. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting. And she somehow wordsmith this, spun it around from climate change and sexism and misogyny and uh, to why I lost the election because of misogyny, because of sexism and old fashioned jerks. Amazing. I mean, uh, you, you can say what you want about Hillary, but she is a wordsmith. It may not make any sense, but she knows how to get it out there. All right, 19 minutes after the hour. You know, I started thinking and reading some of my email about this uh, Hillary Clinton rant at Georgetown University. If you you missed it, let me just play part of it for you here. It uh, evidently, uh, well. National commitment. With respect to the rest of the world, I would say that particularly uh, for women, you're yeah. absolutely right. They will bear the brunt of looking for the food, looking for the firewood, uh, looking for uh, the place to migrate to when all of the grass is finally gone as the uh, desertification moves south and you have to keep moving your livestock or your crops are no longer uh, okay. growing, they're burning okay. up. Hang, in, uh, the hang on, Mr. Wizard. Uh, hang on reported. two seconds. Uh, she's talking, what that is, that's an answer. Instead of saying, I don't know, or instead of saying, uh, I I don't really understand your premise. She's tried to turn climate change um, into something sexist. Uh, women, you're, uh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, I'm Rick Roberts, and if you're a woman, you're going to bear the brunt of uh, trying to save humanity, uh, driving the herd south, um, trying to collect firewood, looking for the food. I, I Evidently, guys are just going to be napping. I, I don't know. Um, but all, she spun this all around to why I lost the election. Well, as some of my uh, audience members pointed out in my email, doesn't it get hotter the further south you go? I mean, if you want to cool off, you go north, don't you? I mean, forgive me, I'm not uh, Mr. Science Guy here, but uh, I don't think she is either. Yeah, well, you're going to be driving the herd south, you see. Um, now, women, you may not realize this, but you're going to bear the brunt of gathering the firewood, looking for food. You're going to have to be driving the herds south when all the grass is gone. Rolling, rolling, yeah. rolling, 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 yeah, that's what you're going to be doing. All right. I don't know where the guys are. Yeah. Rawhide Clinton. Uh, it's it, which drove me to ask the question. When I first came on, what are Democrats up to? I mean, I realize with with Trump in office, they are willing to let America fail, fail miserably, even shut the government down rather than let Republicans succeed at what they're doing. You know, I've got a list of 176 things, positive things that work for us that Trump has initiated since he took office in the last year. You haven't heard much of any, except for the Supreme Court um, nominee. I, I mean, uh, you don't hear it on the news. Why? Because the news is part and parcel to this. So what's what's the ultimate goal? Am I watching the United States of America ultimately turn into Venezuela? Is that what I'm doing? All right. Let's go to Bob. Bob, you've been extremely patient. I appreciate it. Uh, Bob and Capel. Bob, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, uh, and I appreciate being on. Uh, just quickly, um, before I get into the, I think I've got the reason that Democrats are doing what they're doing. But I had some experience because I, uh, my dad was a uh, administrative assistant to the senator from New Mexico for 24 years, and I went to high school in Arlington, Virginia, oh. and I worked uh, one semester at 
uh, at the Senate while I was going to uh, uh, school, graduate school at uh, George Washington University. And uh, I finally got Dad to vote for one Democrat, and wouldn't you bet it was Nixon. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but he was a Democrat all his life, and I put a... Um, a Goldwater sticker on my dad's car one time, and uh, he wasn't happy, he but wasn't he was very, very nice about, about it. That. He just told me to be careful where I display my uh, political feelings. <laughs> anyway, I think seriously that that uh, Obama was really wanting to become a dictator. I mean, and I, I know that he didn't. He didn't finally see his way to get through it, and so hopefully Hillary was going to be the next in line. And they both uh, flunked out when the election came. And I think right now the Democrats are just scrambling for anything because I think they deeply believe, and they're they're correct in some of their belief, that uh, the more people that you can put on the government's payroll or the government's uh, list of uh, of dependents, then you can get closer to having uh, basically a perpetual power and never have to be elected. Yeah, you know, with with Obama, I, I I've kind of got it figured out. I think after you know witnessing eight years of him and talk radio uh, with Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, she never, she never made the big show. She was dancing all around it, but she never got to it. Uh, so at the end of the day, I, I'm trying to figure out what exactly Hillary Clinton is trying to take away from, from the federal government or from the people, uh, ourselves. I mean, she's, she's trying, <clears throat> Rick, what she's trying to do is pet herself on the head and say, oh, you're really okay. She's just trying to get back a little of steam that she lost when she got her face smacked by by uh, Trump. And but I still go back to the same thing. I think the Democratic Party, at least the ones that are in power, uh, that really are strong uh, socialist type Democrats, progressives, if you will, they want to get to a point where it used to be like when uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was in, where there was no contest to the elections, and they were elected automatically every year. And that's what they want. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a fixed horse race. I mean, you know, in the you've probably heard this term, what's the matter with Kansas? Uh, that's the era we live in, elite liberals, uh, seem to genuinely believe that people who didn't vote for them or other liberal candidates were just poor, deluded, uneducated, gun-toting, Bible-thumping idiots who didn't understand what was in our own best interest. Is that condescending? Of course it is. But at least it's not hateful. And that's where we are now, just pure hatred for each other. What did Democrats want? I Man, you got me. I guess all of it. I don't know what they're going to do with it if they get it, but that's what they want. Us. Three thirty-four. The time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. It, mount, it may sound like a very basic thing, and after twenty plus years in talk radio, television, and radio, you'd think I'd figure it out. But it's different somehow. It's not like liberalism we've ever dealt with before. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I used to know. What did Democrats want? Well, they wanted to win. They wanted, uh, you know, they wanted people to believe they were the most caring, uh, most empathetic, you know, the, I get all that. But it's gone now to, to a visceral hatred for anyone that doesn't believe like they do. As I said before, it's that whole what's the matter with Kansas era. Elite liberals seem to genuinely believe that people who didn't vote for liberal candidates were just poor, uneducated, deluded, Bible-thumping, gun-toting idiots who didn't understand what was in our own best interest. Now, that's condescending, I'll give you that. But at least it's not hateful. 
it, it, at least it assumes that liberals still need to work to bring these people on board, right? They don't care about that. Does that attitude still exist? Yeah, it, it does to a degree. As a matter of fact, um, James O'Keefe uh, caught a CNN producer on camera saying he thinks that American voters are stupid as, well, feces. How about that? Is that Can we do that? We can do that. Uh, and he truly believes that, I'm sure. You know, that sort of thinking comes from the fact that liberalism is 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 shot through the filter of narcissism. Yeah, you know what a narcissist is, right? They believe they're better than everyone else just by virtue of being who they are. So do liberals. Liberals also believe they're smarter, more compassionate, more caring just because they reside on the left. Whether you're talking about a liberal or a narcissist, it leads to a high, very high, but unstable self-esteem. If you're if you're generally have high self-esteem, you can easily brush off challenges to your competence. When you have high but unstable self-esteem, you become much more upset when your self-image is challenged. You follow me? If you genuinely have real high self-esteem, then, you know, what people say and what they challenge you on is is really not a big deal. <clears throat> you just kind of blow it off. But when you have high, unstable self-esteem, you become seething, much more upset when your self-image is challenged. That can only lead to anxiety, anger, lashing out as part of an effort to keep those doubts, you know, at arm's distance. It can also lead to unchecked hatred, a hatred of anyone who makes you question what you believe or your own value. You know, that tendency is amplified by that, uh, what would you call it, that full circle of reasoning that liberals use. Are you better, smarter, more caring by virtue of being liberal? Yes. Will other liberals challenge them on that? No. They will pay attention to non-liberals who tell them that they're not better, they're not smarter, they're not more caring than other people. So it leads to an ironclad feedback loop. It just basically loops around and nobody ever jumps off. Obviously, liberals are sensitive, wonderful, and they know it all. And no one who matters will even question this thinking, while anyone who does isn't worth listening to. You see where we're going with this? So what happens when a liberal's views are rejected wholesale across the heartland of the country? You know, the flyover states. You know, the, the parts of the country where people read the Bible and have guns. The uneducated dopes, as uh, liberals refer to them. Well, you know, I'm sorry. When your views are rejected wholesale across the heartland of the country to such an extent that you can drive coast to coast without ever crossing a district run by Democrats, what happens when people point out that most of the policies, you know, they're, they're touting don't work? Look at San Francisco. Look at Baltimore. Look at Detroit. These are all liberal cities, and they're in shambles. They're war zones. What happens when people reject the idea that liberals know what best is best for them? What happens when you tell a liberal, no, I don't think you know what's best for me? Well, we got a taste of that right after Trump won, and liberals were finally, and here's what I want you to get, liberals were finally mad enough to be honest about what they really believe. I mean, it took that. It took them... It took liberals getting so angry, so mad, uh, that Hillary lost and Trump won, that they finally pulled the curtain back and showed you who they are. Hell yeah, we'll shut the government down. Over what? A budget proposal? Over, uh, over spending? Over legislation? No, over people that aren't even supposed to be here. Illegal immigrants. Yeah, we, we got no problem doing that. What? The Constitution... Federal laws as it applies to FISA, what are you talking about? All we need is a Yahoo News article. I mean, 
it finally took the liberals getting so mad they stepped out of themselves and revealed who they were. Uh, Trey, Trey uh, in Duncanville. Trey, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing today? Good. Yes, sir. I'd like to talk, talk to you about two subjects. Uh, Hillary's comments on the climate change and also the stock market. Uh, on the climate change, uh, she's forgetting a little basic scientific fact. Uh, the moon and the sun have a lot to do with the weather. Uh, like, for example, the moon has a lot to do with planning and the tides. Uh, the sun has a lot to do with the solar wind flares and sunspots. They affect the weather. Uh, no one's mentioned that. I, I don't understand that. Well, probably because facts never got in the way of a good liberal. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Well, that's right. And then when it comes to the stock market, the economy, uh, I've studied the stock market for over 30 years, you know, and the thing is that prices always fluctuate and they always go back to the mean or the average. And this is just one of those periods where the we've had a significant run up in the in the stock prices and now they're coming back down and eventually they'll go back up. That's the that's the trend. And I think people are just panicking too much. I think the Democrats are taking it, trying to take advantage of it. No, oh, I, I think you're right. I, I I think the Democrats will take advantage of anything that doesn't take advantage of them first. Well, I'm still optimistic about this country. Uh, I'm, I'm an independent. I'm conservative, uh, and so, but I'm still I'm still optimistic about this country. You know, uh, we have to deal with the issues that we have to deal with. Well, yeah, that's true. That's right. There, there's no doubt about it. Um, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, we, we look at this thing and we say, where, you know, where are we headed? I, I don't know what, the, I can't answer. If you were to ask me openly and honestly, what do the Democrats want? What is their ultimate goal? What's their agenda? I don't know. I, I have no idea other than to, you know, be human speed bumps in, on the road for Republicans. Um, and that's certainly not serving their constituents, is it? No, sir. But I would think the Democrats, the extreme left, they just—I think a lot of them—they want—they want to have total control over of the of the populate of the public, and uh, that's just very dangerous. They think they know better, and they're going to control everything, and uh, that's frightening. No, it is. It is frightening. I mean, anybody that says, "Hey, don't uh, think for yourself. I'll do the thinking for both of us. Uh, just make sure I'm in power." Man, that's a red flag. Well, I think that's what the budget deal was, the, the, the fight over the budget and the shutdown. Now, they wanted control. They're not going to get it, and uh, they're, they're going to fight till the bitter end. No, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Um, well, you have a good day, and uh, I appreciate you letting me be on. You bet, Trey. I'll look forward to the next call. 343 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is News Talk 820 WBAP. Let's uh, let's get back to your calls. Um, when we come back, I'm going to tell you how uh, conservatives learn to hate the FBI. That may be uh, self-evident, but I'll give you the breakdown. But first, let's go to Chris. Chris, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Chris? Yeah, I'm sure it's all about the FBI. Um, hey, I'm I'm just curious. Um, why why do you think I should go to jail for five years? Or or you what? Know, well, you talk- should I go to, five, to, to jail for five years uh, for committing treason, or you want to take my life? I'm just curious. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Say sorry. you're talking really yeah. fast. What what is it you're saying? I say, why do Republicans want me to spend five years in jail, or they want my life because they think I have committed treason because I did not stand up when Mr. Trump. Um, did his, his number. <laughs> in, uh, okay, I, you're, you're not making any sense. Why, why do we want to take your life? Why do we okay. want to take your life because you didn't do something when <laughs> Trump did his number? What, what are you talking about? Has, has, has he not commit, um, accused? Um, okay, I tell you what. First of all, stop chewing gum and talking at the same time. Uh, I'm going to put you, I'm not going to hang up on you. I'm just going to put you on hold, let you collect yourself because you sound extremely nervous. 
and most liberals are. That's fine. Um, I'm going to let you collect yourself. See if you can string a couple sentences together so I can at least hear you and understand what you're saying. I may not agree with you, but you certainly have a right to say what you want to say. So I'll, I'll tell you what, David, I'm going to put him on hold, check with him, and see if he's ready to go again in just a little bit. Uh, let's go to Eric in Fort Worth. Eric, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Eric? I'm being rained on. I hope it isn't too noisy. Thanks, thanks <laughs> no, you're call. fine. Okay. I think I understand what Hillary meant by driving the cattle south. Okay. She's completely thinking about people in Africa who live on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert. Right. And she's afraid the desert is going to get bigger by growing southward. So they're going to have to head south if they want to keep stay in the cattle farming business. You know, so she, that's what she's saying when uh, women have to have to drive the cattle south because of, because of global warming, right? I She's completely thinking about countries like Mali in that comment, I believe. Yeah, it snowed in the Sahara last year. Are you aware of that? It could happen. I mean, there's some elevation there where... Well, it happened several okay. times. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know that until I was made aware of it, and then I checked on it, and sure enough, it did. I mean, I guess it can... You know, it, uh, it can happen anywhere, I guess. All right. Um, did you check back with uh, our liberal call? Okay, w- which one was it? I've forgotten. Chris? Okay, we're going to go back to uh, to Chris, and uh, Chris is uh, Chris is going to take another stab at it. Go ahead, Chris. And I apologize, sir. I did have it on speakerphone. That was no, uh, that, un- uncalled for. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I'm just curious um, if you actually agree with the president that um, anybody that did not stand up on the left side of the State of the Union address um should be at least jailed for five years or um actually executed for treason no of course not of course i don't agree with that did he say that i didn't hear that yeah yeah i didn't no he said that today oh he said Mm -hmm. david see if you can find that would you please see see, see if you can find that yeah no Uh, i think it just revealed um the hatred for this man the hatred for this president um, I mean, when you've Is got the con- reason, I mean, ultimately, I, I have to say he he represents everything that I once held dear in Republicans and don't anymore. The, he he keeps lying. Just uh, how how are you guys gonna gonna live with this after a while? Well, I, I mean, you know, I'll take an I'll take it? I'll take throw. You asked me a question. Would you like an answer? Please. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll take three more years like this first one any day of the week. I mean, we got a we got a great uh, Supreme Court uh, seated uh, nominee seated. Um, we get EPA has been cut to the bone. They were getting as more powerful than the IRS, so I was glad to see that. Um, regulation after regulation has been cut. Tax reform across the board, uh, no matter what you made, which is the fairest way to do anything, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, trying to uh, to keep people coming in. I mean, I'm sick of the country being a doormat for everybody, and it's not because I'm a racist or a bigot or anything else. I mean, I, I want to put a I want to put a starving kid. Uh, I you know, you all the time. I know that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I will take. Uh, another three years just like this first year yeah he's goofy he says things without vetting vetting them um you know he misspeaks a lot i don't think he's an evil guy Uh, he's not in it for the money Uh, it's less money in a smaller house than he already has so who else would put themselves through this if they didn't care for the country (laughs) somebody that actually didn't think he was going to win it i also have i have to ask how have libs how have the liberals actually changed you guys are now railing against the FBI. You're railing against law. You are uh, you you accept pornography and all this stuff. And I'm just wondering what how have we changed and you have not? Uh, I th- well, I think Republicans have changed too, but I think liberals have changed. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, excuse me. Yes. They okay. Have. Your 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 Republicans have have gone really weird. <laughs> 
shooting. Well, no, I, I think liberals, it, it used to be that we would fight amongst ourselves, liberals, conservatives, Democrats, Republicans. It's no longer just a legislative fight because, I mean, I've seen the other side of the curtain. I worked in D.C. I'd go to the so, Capitol. I'd go, right I, I'm, let me finish. I'd go to the Capitol Grill, Grill probably three times a week because I go from the Capitol over the Heritage Foundation, which is right across the street. And you see Republicans and Democrats having their three martini lunches, you know, brokering deals. You let me shirt tail my legislation on your legislation. Uh, but then when they get in front of a TV camera to keep you riled up and to keep other Republicans riled up, oh, they just hate each other. They can't stand each other. I, I won't go down without a fight. And then they both go in and have a Reuben sandwich and about, you know, three tangerays straight up, a little dirty. I mean, it's, it's a game. Okay, it's, and I, under, I understand that. Uh, ultimately, I keep thinking, you know what, I'm trying to call you. You're actually, your job is to actually talk to us, and, and then sometimes you do a better job than, you do, than other times. But, but let us please somehow come together. You know what? Okay, you I, I, I tell you what. Hang, I, hang, on, hang on. Hang no, on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, Chris. I'm, I'm way, way past my break. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm not going to hang up. Um, you want to come together, Republicans, Democrats, Democrats, Republicans. I'll tell you what, Chris. I will put you on with a Republican. David, go through. Uh, go through the. Hello, David. Go through. Uh, go through the phone bank. Find a Republican that would like to come together, to use his terms, with Chris. Chris is a liberal or Democrat. That's fine. You know, I, I got an open table for everybody here. Go through um, the calls we've got. See what Republican would like to come together with Chris. Will you do that during this break? Not a problem. I'm on All it. right, Chris, don't go anywhere. I, I'm, I'm going to bring you a Republican. I'm going to bring you together. All right. I'm the uh, I'm the politics broker. We'll do that next on News Talk 820 WBAP. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, six minutes after the hour, I've got um, uh, Democrat Chris, uh, which uh, implored upon me to to bring Republicans and Democrats together. He he first started by saying, "Should you take my life for not clapping?" and uh, I was confused, admittedly, because I didn't know what he was talking about. First of all, Chris, um, uh, we don't have the death penalty for for treason anymore. The Criminal Justice Act of 1990, uh, 1990 uh, abolished the death penalty. It's, uh, what is it now, life in prison with a minimum of 40 or 45 years or something like that. So, no, <clears throat> Chris, nobody's going to kill you. Uh, but he said... He was accurate. Well, he was sort of accurate. It depends on whether you go to CNN or MSNBC or Fox. Uh, I got a transcript of what Trump said. Um, uh, according to CNN, he wasn't and apparently still isn't happy about the Democrats in Congress that didn't stand to applaud. Now, this is the way CNN worded it, him in his state of the union. They didn't applaud uh, for the families, the African-American families that lost their kids to MS-13 or the Asian guy that, you know, went for two years on crutches to, to get out of North Korea. Um, but, you know, I expect that from CNN. Um, here's what Trump told a crowd in Cincinnati in a speech, and I've got the transcript. He said they were like death and un-American. Un-American, and somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess, why not? Can we call that treason? Why not? I mean, they're certainly... They certainly didn't seem to love the country that much. So it's not like he came out and said, let me tell you about the treasonous people at the State of the Union. So, you know, that's that's a peripheral issue anyway, except that CNN will end up doing a complete night on it. Uh, but Chris said at the very end, you know, you're a talk show host. You should be bringing Republicans and Democrats together. Well, you know what? He's got a point. He's got a point. So I've got Chris and I've got uh, Chris, the Democrat. And Baker, Baker's calling from St. Louis, is that right? So, uh, Baker, welcome. 
Chris, welcome. Thank Thanks for sticking around. Baker, this is Chris. Chris, this is Baker. I just wanted to bring you two together. <laughs> well, great. Well, now that we're together, uh, you know, Chris, I, I, I must say that, um, you know, with, with you mentioning, you, uh, you know, that you'd like us to come together, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I would like to establish a unified ground and a unified front. Uh, you know, between both parties, and you know, for that for that matter, if we can just skip away from Republican and Democrat and just go with an American party, but you know, I had this uh, conversation with my sister from Minnesota. She is a liberal. She is a lesbian, and you know, she told she called me uh, one in the morning, the night of the election, in tears, and said, you know. Your guy won, and you chose uh, you chose your you chose your money over my civil rights. And I guess my argument to that would be, well, I, I disagree. You know, I did choose what I felt was best for my family, but also what I felt was best for this country. Because I, you know, I'm in St. Louis now, but I'm from the DFW area, and I've worked hand in hand with the United States Border Patrol with ICE. So yeah, that's not my argument. Federal Bureau of Prisons. Okay, Chris. Just making sure he knows that's not my argument. That's his sister's argument. Okay. What, what's well, your I, argument, Chris? I understand. Chris? I want to hear your... No, please go ahead. No. I'm, please, well, no, he's, he's, I'm he's, carry, he's carried the conversation. It's I, You wanted me to bring you guys together. I, you're together. What do you have to say, Chris? I, I, all I know is that, that the president basically said that... The, the treason thing really bothers me. I have not. I have okay, not been, I, I've, I've got the tra- Chris. Political. Chris, I've got this transcript in front of me. He didn't bring it up. Somebody said treasonous, and he said, "I guess so. Okay, Why not?" Come on, really? Did you actually hear anything? No. Chris, 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 Chris. I've got the transcript in front of me. And, okay. Whatever the case is, he he thinks that that the people that did not stand up, he agreed with the idea. of, that the people did not stand up for him on the on the left side of the thing, and that makes them treason. Hey, hey, you know what? Why not? Why not? I think that's the case. Why not? It's it's treason. Well, it, 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 it doesn't. Okay, Chris. Years. Okay, let's be adults. You and I both know it doesn't rise to the level of of the definition of. Okay, Chris. We can't do this liberal thing where you keep talking and don't let me respond. I haven't said more than five words. Okay, hang on. He didn't call it treasonous. He agreed with someone that it was un-American and treasonous. He said, why not? I guess so. Uh, he didn't come out and said, hey, let me tell you about the treasonous act at the State of the Union. I can't believe this This is this is like... Okay. This is like CNN and MSNBC. Take a peripheral non-issue and turn it into the news story of the day. Is that the only thing you have a problem with where President Trump is concerned? You know what? I really don't have many problems with him. I think that's the thing. It's it's when when you guys start saying things like, I'm, I have committed treason. Okay, I didn't say that. You said you you said you guys said I committed treason. If you didn't clap, if you didn't care about the people that were killed, if you didn't applaud the efforts of an African American businessman, if you I don't care. You know, you do what you want. I think it's un American. But that's my personal feeling. I have a right to that. I agree with the president in that in that regard, right? I agree that it was un American, yes. It was just un American to call me treasonous. I don't know. Were you there? Is it, uh, you know what? I listened to it. I'm one of the only few people that did. Uh, and uh, ultimately, you guys are you're playing a game. You want to call us pretty Chris, little, I have go- I have been over backwards to try and accommodate this phone call. Uh, you keep saying no, you guys as though I'm speaking for in, in St. Louis or whatever. I don't know what you're trying to do. He's the guy that called in on the talk line. You said bring the Democrats and Republicans sure. together. You're a Democrat. He's a Republican. I can't get you much uh, further together unless you want to go out well, on a we'll date. Call the phone number. We'll talk. I'll talk to him, but uh, don't need to do it on the radio. Okay. Well, that's see, that's one of the perils of calling into a talk show. You're on the air. All right. <laughs> Baker, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the call. I don't know that we're going to get anywhere here. Treasonous. 
Well, it doesn't sound that way. I appreciate your time. All right, Baker. Baker in St. Louis, I appreciate the call. Chris uh, in uh, Holtham City, I'm still confused. Uh, 414 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Let's see if we can send them out for, you know, a nice dinner, maybe a movie, something like that. You think? Yes. All right, 18 minutes after the hour. Well, there you go. See, that's why CNN and MSNBC and Headline News is so dangerous. I got the, I got the copy right in front of me. How they wrote it basically is wordsmithing your train of thought in a different direction. Just because the crowd wouldn't applaud a line from his speech. That's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the two African-American families that lost their daughters to MS-13. He was talking about a member of the military, uh, you know, disregarding his own safety, saving his buddies. He was talking about an Asian guy that walked for two years on crutches to gain security because he was a Christian. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're liberal, conservative, black, white, short, tall, fat, thin, man, woman. You stand up for fellow Americans like that, and you applaud their efforts, whether you agree with their politics or not. That's what he was. I've got the transcript right here. He was uh, in Cincinnati this afternoon or Monday afternoon. They were like death and un-American, un-American. Somebody said they were treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess. Why not? Can we call that treason? Question mark. Why not? Question mark. I mean, they certainly didn't seem to love our country that much. That's what Trump said. Somehow, some way, CNN, MSNBC, and other Democrats like Chris, and Chris is probably a nice guy, have taken that to mean Trump says I'm committing treason if I don't clap or stand up. Now, that's not quite right. That's what CNN and MSNBC are reporting by the way they're reporting it. But no, that's not what he's saying. And don't worry, there's not a death penalty for treason anymore anyway. Uh, and Baker, thank you for uh, calling in. And Chris, whether you believe it or not, that was just a, a random caller. That was somebody that called in on the talk line. Isn't that true, Randy? I mean, you, David screens the calls and you put them up. Yes, sir. I mean, it's the one that uh, David asked the people on there who wants to who would wants like to, to talk, talk with to this guy. The man uh, from yeah. St. Louis was completely respectful and... There you go. And he could, he could be hurt. One thing I have never done, and I've been in this business for well over two decades in television and radio hosting uh, talk shows, I have never, ever seated calls. In other words, set up a call. I've never done it. Yeah, we don't do that here. Uh, nope. No. As a matter of fact, um, I have pretty strict rules about that. Yes, you do. I, I, don't, uh, I don't set up calls. I don't, okay, at uh, five minutes after a call in. I don't do that. Never have, not from day one at KOA. Um, I don't do that, and I uh, I don't ambush people. What you hear is exactly the way it, it unfolds. So, uh, What I uh, like about the way you present the show is that you want to get, the, it's the lawyer, and you want to get the facts out, and yeah, once you don't, you, you don't facts, ambush people. The facts are generally entertaining enough without trying to build <laughs> something around it. That's correct. All right, let's go to Johnson and Granberry. Uh, Johnson, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Johnson? Doing great, Rick. Um, you know, Rick, Chris asked the question, you know, why can't we just come together? Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly think Chris answered his own question. It's Chris asked the question, but yet when uh, when given the opportunity, he did not want to come together. And the main reason for that is, and this is why I believe that it will be hard for any of us to ever come together, when you have one side, that refuses to acknowledge truth and fact. I'm not talking about the liberal realities uh, that they've made, but honest to goodness, truth and fact and reality, it's hard to come together. Um, it's it's almost, I, I mean, it's, I, honestly, I believe it's almost impossible. Um, when you have a set of beliefs that have, that have mutated over the last 30 years into socialist, communist, Marxist views that are so far from our founding and so far from traditional America, I mean, what common ground do we have? Very little. And no, you're, you're, we all you're right. I, I mean, they did several surveys, 
And uh, the majority of millennials said they prefer to live in a socialist nation. But the majority of those surveyed couldn't define socialism. And, and, and Rick, that's part of the problem. And I saw that with Chris. Um, and I'm not trying to beat up on Chris. I'm sure he's a great guy. But um, the problem with the left, with the lay person on the left, is ignorance. And I, that is the downfall of many, uh, much of the left. Well, it was like I was saying, um, when you have people, the elite, and, the, you know, the Republicans have elitists as well. But when you have elite, you usually have a very, very high uh, self-esteem. Um, but with liberals, it's unstable self-esteem. So if you disagree enough, they get such a visceral reaction to whatever it is that they expose, unveil, uh, take down the facade, if you will, of what they really want. And that's what we saw at the State of the Union. I mean, 43 members of the Congressional Black Caucus. You know, there's a there's an African-American entrepreneur that came from nothing, man. And now he's successful. They didn't didn't blink an eye. Two African-American families that lost children, their daughters, to MS-13. Um, and still, they found some way to move forward through that. Didn't bat an eye, no clapping, no standing. Um, I, I mean, yeah, that's un-American as far as I'm concerned. Does it rise to the so, level of treason? Probably not, but it probably plays into it peripherally. So all those politicians that didn't stand, all these years they've been talking about all these great things, uh, all this uh, tolerance and compassion. But yet when truly faced with those, like President Trump was offering right there in front of them, in front of their faces, they refused to acknowledge it. So the question is, and sort of what you've been asking during your whole show, where, where are they really going? What is their true agenda? Because obviously it's not what they've been preaching at us for the last 30 years. Amen. Amen. It's uh, what do you want? What do you, I mean, how can we ever get along if we don't know what you want? <laughs> I mean, well, no, I don't want that. Okay. What do you want? Well, I don't know. I can't tell you. If I told you, I'd have to kill you, uh, figuratively speaking. Okay. Well, how about this? Nope. Don't want that either. Well, okay, what do you, I mean, that's all I'm saying. What do Democrats want? And, and I venture to say Democ voting Democrats within the populace want something much, much different than the Democratic representatives in D.C. You follow me? I, I would, I'd bet the farm on that. 425 the time, your call straight ahead. Democrat Party is going to continue to threaten a shutdown because they won't include responsible immigration reforms, including fixing MS-13 loopholes and other issues, then the president welcomes that fight. Uh, it's a fight we won last time, and it's one we're very confident that we would win again. All right, you just thought, you just thought you were out of the woods. <laughs> what did Trump say today? He said, shut it down. Shut it down. Fine with me. Lock the door on your way out. Bring me a Big Mac, would you? Um, Trump is threatening a government shutdown over border security. Um, today, he called for shutting down the government if Congress does not get off their butts and crack down on illegal immigration. Even as uh, these congressional leaders were, oh, they say they're closing in on a major budget deal to help ensure the government remains funded in, until, what, 2019, I guess? Um, I'd let, This is what Trump said, and Chris, this is exactly what he said. I'd love to see it shut down. If we can't get this stuff taken care of, um, shut it down. He was meeting with uh, Border Patrol and some other law enforcement, <clears throat> excuse me, officials to uh, discuss gang-related violence, specifically MS-13. If we've got to shut it down because the Democrats don't want safety, then shut it down. You know, it's... Um, Calling the Democrats bluff. Um, you know, his comments are combative, and uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, it had little to do with a delicate negotiation. You know, I'm so sick. Well, you got to be delicate because you don't want to upset anybody. You know what? If, if, if you're such a Nancy pants that you can't discuss this and get on with it, then you don't belong there. Uh, they're delicate negotiations to keep the government open Whoa, past Thursday. That's the next deadline. Do you know that? Um, congressional leaders from both parties, uh, they're probably close, close to a deal. 
They want to raise, uh, the Democrats want to raise statutory spending caps on military and non-military spending for the current fiscal year and the next one. Um, that's probably going to ease its way into passing a temporary spending measure. Uh, the, the bottom line is just tell the Democrats, fine, here, here's a, here's a carte blanche. You can, you know, a, a never ending ATM machine. That's what you guys want. That's how you keep people voting for you. Um, in the meantime, we're going to try and protect the American people. Uh, let's go to Robert, Robert in Fort Worth. Robert, how you doing? Doing well, Rick. In typical liberal fashion, Chris didn't let any facts get in his way, did he? <laughs> well, you know, he's a, yeah. he has a right to believe what he wants to believe. It's just that, you know, if you if you take a steady diet of CNN or MSNBC, you know, you've got to expect that. Be, you know, I'm I'm read what Chris brought up to me, and the I've got the transcript. And then if you read the news article, it's not the same thing. Yeah, Chris is a perfect example of a typical liberal that's out there. You know, he responded to your show by saying what you should be doing, not him, but what you should be doing is bringing Democrats and Republicans together. So you did exactly what he asked, presented it to him, and what did he do? He absolutely went the other way and made it personal. Well, I don't know what you're doing with this guy on the line from St. Louis and you know, if you want to give him my phone number, we can talk, but just not on the radio. Well, give me a break. <laughs> it's a typical liberal mantra. You know, you give them everything they want, and they're not happy. It's 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 so frustrating. And to answer Chris's question, he is the exact reason why you can't bring Democrats and Republicans together. Just like the fellow from St. Louis had a very rational, respectful conversation had nothing negative to say at all. He's talking about his sister, who he completely disagreed with. And you turn around and try to get some input from from Chris, and, and all Chris wants to do is make it personal and talk in circles and fumble around with his words because he can't make a coherent point. But, you know, to Just he, like it, most liberals that are out there. To, in his defense, Robert, not that he needs it, but that's the way Democrat representatives talk to their constituents. I mean, Absolutely. You, you listen to Chuck Schumer talk for 20 minutes, uh, lots of words coming out, but I can't really tell you what he said. You know, Rick, how would you like for your entire professional existence to rely on the ignorance of others? <laughs> yeah. I mean, just think about that for a moment. Because yeah. that's really where the Democratic Party in this country are at. They have nothing to stand for, nothing to run on. They're running on solely 100% opposition. That's all they got, resist. And and what their true existence relies on is the ignorance of millions of Americans. Uh, you know, it's it's morally bankrupt. It's it's a it's a it's a bad situation for the country. It's a bad situation for the Democrats, and it's a bad situation for the people following them. No, listen, I I agree a hundred percent with you. I I would love, I and I truly believe that that Democrats, you know, that live next door to you or work where you work or whatever, um, you know, they're in a different zip code than the Democrat representatives in Washington, uh, and because we all have to live with the problems that come out of Washington. Uh, but there are some. There are some out there. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can you can write it down. Two and two equals four. No, it doesn't. It's five and three quarters. Chucky Schumer told me so. Nancy Pelosi, CNN. It was reported. It was. Uh, you can't argue with people like that. It's impossible. Well, you're you're right. But you know the thing about it is we're not dealing with the Democrat of forty years ago. No. Forty years ago, I'd say the statement that you just made would be 100 percent accurate. But the fact of the matter is, that's not where we're at. We've got 40 years of liberal media shoving this crap down our throat, and we've got 40 years of generations. You think about all the people having children at early ages and growing up in single-family households and all this, and they've relied on the Democrats to be their daddy. Yep. And now we look forward several generations ahead. And there is a very large percentage of the Democrats out there that a guy like me and a guy like you can't have a rational conversation with. And I don't think it's I don't I don't think it's just a, a few. I think it is a huge percentage of that party. I deal with people every single day 
And and I have to be careful about how I have my conversations and who I have them with because, you know, dealing with the general public, you, you don't know what people's politics are. And I promise you that if I have a conversation with the typical Democrat that I run across every day, it's going to end poorly. They're going to be calling my office and complaining and telling them what a bad guy I was. And I mean, it's it's just, it's a really sad state of affairs, but I really believe that it's a much, much larger percentage than, than what it was just a decade ago. Well, There's I think so you're, many people that I, are just I, bought into it. I, I hold out hope for the people. Um, and that may be a fool's errand. I'm not sure. I don't hold out any hope for democratic representatives. I mean, you know, draining the swamp. They just need to doze the, the whole thing and start over. Um, and that includes a lot of Republicans, too, because it's become a game. It's become a political machine, and it only knows how to run one way. Um, and that's what we've got to stop. We've got to stop the cogs in that political machine from running if we're ever to get this government back under control. Um, but, Robert, good call. Very good call. I appreciate it. Uh, 4.42 the time. Let me step aside very quickly. We'll check that afternoon drive and back with your calls in the court of public opinion. And, Chris, you feel free to call back any time. I mean that. I truly do. All right, 4.48 the time. Glad you're along. Let's go to uh, Brian in Allen. Brian, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Brian? Hey, Rick. So uh, the State of the Union thing, uh, unfortunately, it's one of those things where there's rules that we don't look at and don't think about normally. Uh, it's just the same thing as the whole resist movement. Their only goal is to win. And unfortunately, part of the rule about the State of the Union is that if uh, – if you're shown to be standing up and, and applauding and being polite, something that any normal, you know, civic minded person would do, then you're basically saying, oh, you're doing a good job and we agree with you. And of course, then your chances of getting elected are diminished, supposedly. And so that's why they feel like they can not act like normal people. Oh, and by the way, congratulations on living to uh, Armageddon plus two weeks. You've managed to reach that. So. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I can understand um, not standing, you know, because like every other thing was a standing ovation um, or applauding if it was Trump talking about himself or talking about his administration, you know, but sitting on your hands in light of the guest that he introduced. That's what I don't understand, especially with the Congressional Black Caucus. I mean, that's what they've been fighting for all this time. Well, how can intelligent people go on TV and lie the way they do repeatedly, day after day? I mean, this is all part of the same thing. It's a win at all cost. Character doesn't matter anymore. Uh, uh, trustworthiness doesn't matter. It's all about you know who can get the spin, who can who can uh, try and convince the largest number of uh, sheeple that you know we're the right thing to to do, and and that you need to go out with us, and and that's. That's the sad thing. It's like, you know, you think about it, critical thinking. How many people would be willing to go to either side of a, of a point of a discussion and say, all right, what do you believe in? All right, which side do you want to argue? Maybe together we can educate each other and help each other to see the other side. I will take that side or I will take this side. I just want to understand why it is that we disagree and why it is we can't solve this. Yeah. But politicians aren't interested in solving anything because then there wouldn't be a need for them. Exactly. You you nailed it. You know, it, it's the, the same thing I say about uh, Jesse Jackson and, uh, you know, all the 21st century poverty pimps that are out there. Um, you know, if we get up in the morning and there's no racism, they're irrelevant. You know, we've got to be yeah. at each other's throats for them to be relevant. And the two-party system now, what I see now... A lot of the founding fathers thought that there shouldn't be any parties, that it would be a, a tremendous way to lead to a quick downfall of our experiment. And I believe that they're right, because you look at it, even with Roy Moore and, and uh, the other guy who no one even cared about, you look at these votes, you're not voting for them. Right. You're voting for Chuck Schumer, or you're voting for Nancy Pelosi, or you're voting for 
you know, uh, McConnell or Ryan. You're, there's no such thing as voting for a person who will actually go up there and represent you anymore. All they're doing is basically people have figured out a way to corrupt our system, and that is by having it so that you can just pay money to one source, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and their leaders – and from then, what do they do? They hand the money out to their people, and then they take one side, depending on who's paid them, whatever, and that's it. That's how we've basically managed to corrupt our our grand experiment. So yeah, there's two sides. You're right. That's you're, it. You're right. You know, I, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but at one point, I don't recall what it was, but uh, Manchin, I can't remember his first name. I always forget his first He's a Democrat. Bill, Bill from, Manchin. Yeah, yeah. He's a Democrat Bill from West Virginia. Um, he was caught on camera. He was applauding, starting to stand up. He got about halfway into the stand, and he looked over, and none of the other Democrats were standing, and Chucky e. Schumer was burning a hole through him. And so he yep. sat down real quick. But, I mean, it just goes to show these guys, you know, they're not operating as individuals. They're operating as a herd. And forgive me, but that's what, the, I mean, not just Democrats, but Republicans. It's that herd mentality. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying there's one side that's right or wrong, although, again, I have my views. But when it comes right down to it, this two-party system, I mean, I don't want what they have in Europe with the, you know, the 17 oh, different no. parties yeah, that, and all that. No, that's, that's, that's a disaster. But at the same time, I want people that are able to stand up, speak their mind, someone on the other side able to go ahead and answer them and say, this is how we're trying to solve this. And then let them go ahead and say something back. And that's what you see with the prime ministers uh, when he takes the questions every Wednesday. That's actually a very, very interesting and nice way to look at government actually working for people. I think you're right, Brian. I appreciate it very much. Well thought out call. Uh, you may want to give Chris a call and just kind of give him a, you know, how to express myself 101. Uh, good call, Brian. Gerald in Lake Hubbard. Gerald, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Good, sir. Good, sir. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. A uh, little about me. I was in the Marine Corps, got out just before uh, Storm and Norman took all my friends over there. And then I was a history teacher that took too many sociology classes. <laughs> and, and so I've been sitting there looking. I saw some interesting things. Uh, George Soros's nephew is married to Chelsea Clinton. And then his son is married to that Adam Schiff's sister. And then when you add the billions of dollars and the fact that he's been kicked out of his own country and uh, Vladimir Putin wants to <clears throat> talk with him, uh, I kind of think, I'm wondering, you know, these Democrats aren't the same. And you're right about that. They're leaning towards bringing our country into socialism. And, and they've been nibbling that way at it for generations now. They're in there for the long game. Yeah, yeah well, there's no doubt about it. D.C. is the most incestuous place on the planet Earth. Uh, Gerald, thank you for the service, and if you listen at all, you know I mean that sincerely. That's going to do it for me. Mark Levin, he's coming up next. I'm going to be out tomorrow. Grant Stinchfield is going to be uh, handling the mic. Be, be nice to him, all right? He's a good guy. Um, that's going to do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether we agree or not. That's always my priority. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP.